Hello chemists and welcome to today's video on nucleophilic addition elimination mechanisms. We're going to be applying that mechanism to the reactions of acyl chlorides and acid anhydrides. I hope you find the video useful, let's get started. Let's begin by examining how acyl chlorides can be converted to carboxylic acids. Here I've drawn an acyl chloride. You might recognise this looking a little bit like a carboxylic acid, except normally on a carboxylic acid, next to the carbonyl you have an OH or hydroxy group. Here we have a chloro group instead. This acyl chloride's name is ethanoyl chloride. Eth stems from the fact that it has two carbon atoms, and the anoyl chloride comes from the fact that it has the acyl chloride functional group. In order to convert this to a carboxylic acid, we react it with water. And the product that we form will be ethanoic acid. And this HCl is not, strictly speaking, hydrochloric acid. It's hydrogen chloride, which is gaseous hydrogen chloride, which will escape as white fumes. It's very important for this reason that you conduct this reaction inside a fume cupboard. The mechanism for this reaction is nucleophilic addition elimination. And all you need to do is add to your acyl chloride water, and this reaction will occur spontaneously at room temperature. It's very important that actually acyl chlorides are kept away from water, unless that's the specific reaction that you want to take place, because these reactions are very exothermic and those fumes of HCl are very toxic. So you wouldn't want to conduct this reaction by accident. Let's have a look at the mechanism. Water is going to act as our nucleophile, and we have a polar carbonyl bond, so we'll label partial charges on this. A lone pair on oxygen will attack the carbon of the carbonyl because it's delta positive, and this will cause the carbonyl bond to break open. We show that via the movement of electrons from one of the bonds in the carbonyl onto oxygen. Let's now draw our intermediate. You can see in this intermediate the oxygen is now negatively charged because a pair of electrons have moved onto it but we can see that the bit that was once water is now positively charged. That's because this oxygen has three bonds, whereas oxygen ordinarily only makes two bonds. So it's using one of its electrons from its lone pair to make this bond, and as a result, it becomes positively charged. What we need to do now is the elimination part of the mechanism, because this step of the mechanism where the water joined on is the addition part of nucleophilic addition elimination. So now we need to eliminate something. And if we compare this product to our final product over here, we can see that it definitely doesn't have this chloro group. So this is the group that we're going to eliminate. We're going to reform the carbonyl by pushing these electrons back into this bond as such. That then causes the chloro group to leave via that second arrow. I'll just repeat that. There we go. So the chloro group's going to leave with its electrons forming a chloride ion. That will form this intermediate, which is still positively charged. So our final step is to deprotonate this oxygen here, which means to remove one of the hydrogens. The chloro chloride group that came off here is not going to do that. It's not going to act as a base. So never show the chloride group acting as a base. Simply show a pair of electrons moving from this bond onto the oxygen atom. That's enough to say that this hydrogen leaves as a H plus hydrogen ion. This will form our product, and the H plus hydrogen ion will pair up with the chloride ion to form the hydrogen chloride fumes. Now let's look at how acyl chlorides can be converted to esters. Here I've got the same acyl chloride, ethanol chloride, and just like you would normally make an ester by reacting a carboxylic acid with an alcohol, all you need to do with acyl chlorides is react them with alcohols. This is pretty much the same reaction. So we'll take ethanol chloride, react it with ethanol, and this will produce ethylethanoate and hydrogen chloride fumes. The naming of the ester is quite straightforward. The first part of the name ethyl stems from this group on this side of the carboxylate. The ethanoate group is this side because it's too long. You can also think about naming esters in terms of the alcohol and acyl chloride used. This is ethyl because we used ethanol and ethanoate because we used ethanol chloride. The mechanism for this is again nucleophilic addition elimination. And all you need to do is add an alcohol to your acyl chloride, and this will react at room temperature. Let's have a look at the mechanism. The mechanism is the same, except rather than there being a hydrogen here, when, like when this was water, this is now the alkyl chain of the alcohol. I've oriented the molecule so it makes the O closer to the carbonyl that it's going to attack. It's still ethanol, it's just shown flipped. So let's attack that delta positive carbonyl from the lone pair on oxygen and break the carbonyl bond, pushing the electrons onto the oxygen. We form this intermediate. 
you can see the oxygen is now negatively charged. This first step, where the oxygen attacked the carbon, is the addition step. Now we need to show the elimination step. We reform the carbonyl by pushing these electrons back in, and then we make the chlorine group leave as a chloride ion by taking these electrons and putting them on chlorine. That will form this nearly final product, but it's still an intermediate. You can see this oxygen is still positively charged, so all we need to do is push the electrons from this bond onto oxygen, getting rid of that H plus ion. I've now straightened the molecule out so it looks a little bit more like you see up here, and you can see we've also got hydrogen chloride as a byproduct. Acyl chlorides can be converted to primary amides. Take this acyl chloride here, again ethanol chloride. Hopefully you should recognise this molecule as ammonia. This will produce a primary amide. This is the amide functional group here. It contains both a carbonyl directly bonded to a nitrogen atom. This is called a primary amide because there are no carbon chains or alkyl groups bonded to this nitrogen. If there was a longer group coming off of this made of carbon, a bit like you see in an ester, then this would be called an N-substituted amide instead. This is too long, so it takes the prefix eth, and it's an amide, so it becomes ethanamide. We also form hydrogen chloride fumes as a byproduct. The mechanism is also nucleophilic addition elimination, the standard mechanism for the reaction of acyl chlorides. The reagents, all you need to do is add ammonia to your acyl chloride, and this reaction will occur at room temperature. Let's examine the mechanism. In the addition step, the nucleophile is ammonia. We have a carbonyl, which is polar. The lone pair on nitrogen will attack the delta positive carbon, causing the bond of the carbonyl to break, we show as follows. Let's show our intermediate now. Here we have it. We now need to perform the elimination step. So we're going to reform the carbonyl, and then we're going to eliminate chloride ions. You can see the chloride's been eliminated, and we have this positively charged intermediate, because we haven't dealt with the fact that nitrogen's formed four bonds here, whereas it should only really have three if it's going to be neutrally charged. So, as again, we show the loss of hydrogen by moving a pair of electrons from a nitrogen-hydrogen bond onto the nitrogen. That gets rid of H+, which will pair up with this chloride to form hydrogen chloride, and then we have our product with no charge on it. In the previous slide, I talked about N-substituted amides, so let's have a look at one of them. Here I have my acyl chloride, and here I have a primary amine. In this case, we're looking at ethanol chloride and methyl amine. This is a little bit like esterification, but instead of this being an OH, it's an NH2. So our N-substituted amide, this product here, will look a little bit like an ester, except there's an N where there was an O. It's N-substituted because there's an alkyl or carbon group coming off of the nitrogen. Naming these is a little bit more challenging. I'll show you the name here. This is N-methyl ethanamide. It gets the ethanamide part from this group here, where we had two carbons, and that was the group part of the group that contained the amide, the C double bond O, and the N. The N-methyl tells us that we have a carbon chain that is one long on the nitrogen atom. We also get hydrogen chloride as a byproduct. Our mechanism is again nucleophilic addition elimination because we're working with an acyl chloride. All we need to do is add an amine to the acyl chloride and this reaction will occur at room temperature. Let's examine our mechanism. Our amine is going to act as our nucleophile. It has a lone pair. We have a polar carbonyl bond. The lone pair from the nitrogen will attack the delta positive carbon and that will cause this bond here to break. Here is our intermediate we now need to eliminate the chloride ion. Reform the carbonyl, eliminate the chloride, and now we have another intermediate because it's still positively charged. Move a pair of electrons from a nitrogen-hydrogen bond onto the nitrogen to get rid of H+. The H+, will pair up with the chloride to make hydrogen chloride, and then we have our product. Now we're going to look at the reactions of acid anhydrides, and in this first reaction, I'm going to show you how an acid anhydride can be converted to a carboxylic acid. This structure here is an acid anhydride, and it has the name ethanoic anhydride. When naming acid anhydrides, you need to look at half of the molecule, because you can see some symmetry in this molecule here. You can see that this half of the molecule is two carbons long, so it gets the name ethanoic anhydride. 
In order to convert this acid anhydride into a carboxylic acid, we're going to need to hydrolyze the bond with water. Hydrolyze means using water to break. You can see what we're really doing here is breaking one of these bonds here or here and adding an OH group onto both carbons. That means that the cleavage or hydrolysis of ethanoic anhydride results in two moles of ethanoic acid. Now, I probably should have simplified this by just putting a two in front of one of the images of ethanoic acid here, but I wanted to display the structures like this to show clearly how all we're really doing is breaking one of these bonds here and breaking it into two. The mechanism for this reaction is again nucleophilic addition elimination. But at A level, I've never seen any examples where you're asked to mechanise the reaction of an anhydride. If you were asked to do so, though, it would be exactly the same as the mechanism for the acyl chlorides, except the oxygen would be our leaving group rather than chlorine being our leaving group. All you need to do for this reaction to take place is add water to your anhydride, and this reaction will occur at room temperature. Now let's look at how acid anhydrides can be converted to esters. Here I have an acid anhydride, ethanoic anhydride, and in order to convert it to an ester, I'm going to react an alcohol. Hopefully now you're noticing some similarities between the reactions of acid anhydrides and acyl chlorides. You should be because their reactions are exactly the same. This will produce our ester. In this case, we've got a group that is one long from the alcohol, and we've got a group that is two long from the anhydride. So this will be methyl ethanoate. Our byproduct of this reaction, though, is always one half of the acid anhydride. So if you consider this part of the ester to have come from this part here, then this whole part over here, the other side, the right hand side, has been eliminated during the addition elimination, and it will pick up a proton and it will become the carboxylic acid. So this will form ethanoic acid. If I'd used, let's say, propanoic anhydride, then I'd form methyl propanoate because this bit would be too lo uh, three long, and I'd also form propanoic acid as a byproduct. So half of your acid anhydride is always your byproduct. Mechanism again: nucleophilic addition elimination, and all you need to do is add alcohol, and this reaction will occur at room temperature. Following the trend by treating our acid anhydrides much like our acyl chlorides, we're also going to try and make a primary amide out of them. We'll again be starting with ethanoic anhydride. Previously, when I wanted to make a primary amide, I used ammonia. So I'm not going to change anything. I'm still going to use ammonia. This will produce ethanamide, as we've shown here. And remember that one half of the anhydride acts to create the byproduct. So we're going to get ethanoic acid as a byproduct here. Our mechanism is also nucleophilic addition elimination. And all we did there was add ammonia and the reaction occurred at room temperature. Now let's look at how we can convert an acid anhydride into an N-substituted amide. Have a little think back to what you've learned from the reactions of acyl chlorides. What would we need to react an anhydride with in order to create an N-substituted amide? Hopefully you've got the same answer as me. We've gone for an amine. So we're reacting our ethanoic anhydride with this amine here, methyl amine. We'll produce this structure here. Now let's have a look at the naming for it. On the nitrogen, there is a methyl group. And this side of the molecule with the carbonyl on it is two carbons long, so it becomes ethan, and it's an amide because it has the C double bond O and the N. So it's N methyl ethanamide. Our byproduct will again be ethanoic acid. Our mechanism for this reaction is still nucleophilic addition elimination, and all we did was add an amine, and the reaction occurred at room temperature. Let's consider why we might choose to use an acyl chloride versus an acid anhydride. Take these two reactions. They both produce the same product, N-methyl ethanamide. However, one of these, the top one, is using an acyl chloride as its starting material, whereas the other is using an acid anhydride. Why might we choose an acyl chloride? Well, I can tell you why we wouldn't choose an acyl chloride. It produces toxic HCl fumes. So therefore, it needs to be done in a fume cupboard if it's safe. And secondly, whenever we use acyl chlorides for these sorts of nucleophilic addition elimination reactions, the reactions are very exothermic. They give off a lot of heat. So you've got to make sure you're conducting the reaction in the right sized container and also not doing too much of it at once. However, 
they do have very, very fast rates of reaction. So if you're trying to produce this N-methylethanamide quickly, then you're going to get it a lot quicker with the acyl chloride than you would with the acid anhydride. So using acyl chloride has its key downsides, but it also has the advantage of being faster. Well, following that tutorial, I'd now recommend that you get plenty of exam practice on those questions. You'll find after doing lots of questions that they're very, very similar and they become quite repetitive. So this content is relatively straightforward to master. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.